When you find it, say amen. Let's all read together. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil? Then Satan answered the Lord, said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Amen. God bless the reading of his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. And just for the next few minutes, I want to teach on the subject, the hedge of the Lord. And I want to talk to you today about its significance in the lives of God's people, having the hedge of the Lord around you. Now, anyone that is familiar with the book of Job would know that the book of Job is one of the most talked about books of the Bible. For example, whenever a preacher or believer is going through some kind of trial or testings in their lives, or even when they're preaching on trials and testings, you would find them referring often to the book of Job because it helps to shed some light on that particular topic or issue that they may be dealing with in their lives. But in addition to reading about the sufferings of Job, which we are uh, all aware of by now, there are some other interesting things that have been mentioned about Job in this particular book, and I just want to mention to you very quickly, the Bible said in verse 1 that he was from the land of us. Everyone say us. And that word us, the land of us, refers to a fertile land. It was a productive land, a fruitful land. The scripture also said that he was a perfect and an upright man and one that feared God. And he eschewed evil, or he stayed away from anything that was evil in the sight of the Lord. He was a married man. He had ten kids, seven sons, and three daughters. He was a generous man. He was an intercessor, a prayer warrior. He was well-to-do, meaning he was loaded and blessed immeasurably with prosperity and wealth and uh, silver and gold, he had oxen and camels and she asses and all of these different things that, uh, that they had back in Bible days that made them wealthy. Job was a very wealthy man, a well-to-do man. He was very happy, but there's something the Bible also said that Job was also the greatest of all men in the East. So could you imagine being a child of God and being known as the greatest of all people in your community or the greatest of all people in your state. And he, had, he was not broke. He had a lot going on. He was just that blessed of the Lord. But one of the greatest assets that Job had that we want to talk about today is that he had what we call the hedge of the Lord. Now before we can talk about the hedge and what this hedge is all about, let us just back up a little bit because there were some things that had transpired in the spirit realm over Job's life that he was not aware of that led us to this topic or to these scripture verses that talked about the hedge of the Lord. Whether you know it or not, even though we're here in the earth and we are serving God, there's a spirit world or a spirit realm above us, around us. And there's stuff that is going on all the time where you and I are concerned. There are conversations that are being uh, conducted in the spirit realm concerning our lives, concerning the will of God for our lives. Whether it is God and Satan talking, or God is talking to his angels, or demonic spirits are chatting with each other, or familiar spirits are talking to each other about us, something is happening in the spirit realm or in the spirit world. 
The Bible said here in verse 6, in verse 6, now there was a day. I want you to just follow me in your Bibles. And if you don't have a Bible, just sit next to someone that has a Bible. But I want everybody to get into the Word because this is really going to help you today to understand what God is speaking to us about in this season of our lives. Now there was a day, verse 6, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Now, the terminology, sons of God, in this text is referring to the angels of the Lord. Everyone say the angels of the Lord. In Bible days, they did not, the sons of God would not just refer to the people of God, but it would also refer to spiritual beings as well. So these angels uh, came before the Lord, and they apparently they came uh, before God, giving an account to God on behalf of Job's affairs, or it may be concerning the things that were going on in the earth. They came before God, and God began to talk to them, and they and, and question them, and communicate with them. But the Bible said that while they were there before God in the presence of God Satan himself showed up in their midst now mind you Satan was kicked out of the heavens he was kicked out of the presence of God but for some odd reason he just kept on coming back into the presence of God and this is to show you that whenever the people of God come before God Whenever we are gathered together in his name, the devil will always show up in our midst as well. As a matter of fact, he showed up in here today. Unannounced, uninvited, unsolicited, unwelcome. It is his nature to show up intrusively wherever the people of God are, wherever the presence of the Lord is. That's why when you're praising and blessing God and being caught up in the presence of God, you still need to keep an awareness in your mind that the devil is somewhere close by. He may be sitting on your rope. Talk back to me, somebody. Waiting to make an attack. Waiting to come after you. Uh, that is why many people, they come into the house of the Lord and they enjoy the presence of the Lord and they enjoy the move of God. And when they go home, there's something just comes up unexpectedly to wipe that joy out of their hearts. Or oh, talk back to me, somebody. Or oh, the devil knows how to do it. He's always lurking around where the presence of the Lord is. So while Satan now was in the midst of them, God turned and asked him a question. He asked him a couple of questions. As a matter of fact, uh, where are you? Where, where were you, Satan? Satan said, I went to and fro in the earth. Not that he was exercising. He was just walking up and down seeking whom he may devour, you see, because that's the job of the enemy. But then in verse 8, the Bible says, God asked uh, Satan this question. He said, has thou considered my servant Job? Or have you checked out my friend? Have you checked out this person that I esteem highly. That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and an upright man. One that feareth God and one that assureth evil or stayed away from evil. I believe the greatest compliment that God could ever give a person in this world or in the body of Christ is by saying these words that there is none like him or her in the earth. It's good to hear that you're blessed. It's good to hear that you're highly favored. But you can be blessed and still have some mess in your life. You can be blessed and still doing some wrong stuff in your life. Or talk back. You all know how church folks are. Or we bless the next minute. We are dabbling in sin. But here God is saying to Job, that saying to Satan about Job, that there is none like him in the earth. I don't know about you, but I would love God to say that about me. That there is none like Stephen Clark in the earth. Go, Jesus. Go, Jesus. Go. Uh, I'm sure we all love to hear that. That there's none like you in the earth. And that your life is perfect. That your life is blameless and that you fear God. And that you shun evil. And let me say this to you as I continue the message. That it is possible. It is possible that we all can live a perfect life. 
I said it is possible that we all can live a perfect life. Lord, I could barely get my amen. So where's my amen corner? Enoch walked with God. He was human just like we are. Uh, and he had his testimony that he pleased God. Job was a perfect and upright man. Human being just like Eve and every one of us. Yet he pleased God. He shunned away evil. He was perfect and blameless. So it is possible that we all can live a perfect life in the sight of God. But we have to make up in our minds to do so. And stop blaming the devil. And stop blaming your friends. And stop blaming sister so and so, brother so and so. And talking about they made me do this. And then nobody make you do anything. You do it because you wanted to. Or talk back to me somebody. You sinned because you wanted to. You lied because you wanted to. Do I have any witnesses in the house? Or do I need to cast off some devils at the end of the service? So the Bible said that there was none like him. God was telling Satan. God was just bragging about Job. Then Satan answered the Lord and said... After God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? Said and say yes. And I'm just paraphrasing the text here. Said and say yes. I've checked him out. I've seen him. I've observed him. I've seen how you have blessed him. How you have increased him. How you have multiplied him. I see how he worships you. And how he blesses your name. And how he fears you. But then Satan opened his mouth and asked God this question. Does Job fear God for nothing? Or does he fear God for nothing? In other words, what Satan was asking God was, do you think Job is doing all of this stuff just because he loves you? In other words, what, what Satan was saying, the reason why Job is doing all of this stuff is because you've been good to him. It's because you have blessed him. It's because you have increased him. Now Satan has, he, he Satan was on to something. Because in truth and in fact, you have those type of saints that only love God and serve God because he has done something good for them. Because he gave them that new car. And he gave them that six bedroom mansion. And he gave them an increase in their paycheck. And then they go to shouting and praising God. All the while, while they were going through, they barely lifted their hands and tell God, thank you. But the minute God came through for them, now they're so in love with Jesus. But Job was not that type of believer. He was not that type of child of God. Whether God blessed him or did not bless him. You see, that's why God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Because God knew Job's character. That Job was a consistent person. He loved God whether God gave him stuff or not. He served God whether God blessed him or not. Or talk back to me somebody. And God wants us as his people to get to that place in our walk with him. Where we're going to give him the glory. Where we're going to live for him. Whether he does another thing for us or not. Or oh, one songwriter say, if he never do anything for me again, he has already done enough. Or oh, somebody ought to give God praise. Do I have any type of believers, those type of believers that believe that in spite of, I will love God, I will serve God, I will give him my all. Doesn't have to do anything else for me. I love him because he is God. I worship him. Because, not because he's my healer, not because he's my redeemer, just because he is, oh come on and clap your hands and let the devil know that you are saved for real. Uh, that you're not an opportunist. <laughs> you're not a gold digger. Come on and put your hands together and let the devil know that you are for real saved. To the bone saved or talk back to me somebody. So now Satan said to God in verse 10, he said, Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the works of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Now y'all know the story. We're not going to get too much into the sufferings of Job. But I just want to focus on the hedge for the next 10 minutes or so. A hedge, by definition, 
It's normally a row of bushes or small trees planted close together, especially when forming a boundary or a fence. The original inspiration for a hedge came from the Old Testament where the Middle Easterners had issues with wild animals in Bible days. They, they had their properties, they had their possessions, their livestock, whatnot. But these wild animals such as lions and bears and hyenas and wolves, whatnot, would intrude on their properties and would attack them and, and attack their, their livestock and so on and so forth. And it would, they would do it unaware to so these people. Sometimes they're sleeping when they get up in the morning. Huh? All of their livestock are dead. And so they had a lot of intrusions going on from these wild animals. So as a result of that, they began to induce uh, to grow uh, thorn bushes around their properties. And they allowed these bushes to grow up and to become tall and to guard their living compounds. So whenever a wolf or a bear would try to come through, they would have to go through the thorns. And how many of you know that when a thorn stick you, that's it for you? And as a matter of fact, having to deal with all of these different thorns. So that's really the original inspiration about the hedge. But what Job was told, what Satan saw where Job was concerned, Satan saw, the, the hedge that Satan saw was not so much thorn bushes, but one that was spiritual in nature, but compared to that of a bulwark. And the bulwark is a high wall. It's a fortress. It's a secured place. It's much bigger and much stronger than thorn bushes. When Satan looked at Job, he saw a high wall in the spirit over his life. One that could not have been penetrated. One that could not have been easily broken down or destroyed. The first principle I want to give you today concerning the hedge of the Lord is that God's hedges provides total protection for every area of our lives 24-7. I want you to understand this, that we just don't need God to bless us or to increase us in substance, but we also need God to protect us and to preserve us from every kind of evil there is in the world. More today than on yesterday. Talk back to me, somebody. There's so much stuff that is going on out there today in our world that we need God to protect our lives. When, they, when Jabez asked God to bless him, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my territories, but that thou wouldest keep your hands upon me and to keep me from all evil. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live my life being blessed and unprotected. I don't want to live my life having silver and gold, but have no security around me. Or talk back to me, somebody. That's a dangerous place to be in. So here now, God had placed a hedge over Job's life. And that hedge was to protect Job from every evil way. The Bible said that Job was pretty much covered 24-7. He had more protection in his life than the president of the United States has right now. Think about that. Job had more protection in his life than any president, any queen, whoever they may be, have right now in their lives. And there were three areas of Job's life that were fully secured and protected by the hedge of the Lord. Let's just look at them very quickly. The first one is his personage. Everyone say personage. Or the person of Job. That's what personage means. The person of Job. Satan said here, has not thou made an hedge about him? When Satan looked at Job, the person, he saw him fully covered. <laughs> I'm sure Satan wanted to go after Job so many of times, but he could not because there was a hedge around him. The devil could have destroyed each and every one of us a long time now, but he couldn't because there is a hedge around.
around us. He may have taken a couple shots at us. Some of you, he may have knocked you down to the ground, but he could not have knocked you out because there is a hedge around you. Oh, talk back to me, somebody. The Bible also said that Satan not only saw a hedge around Job, but he also saw a hedge around the people in his life. The Bible said, has thou not placed also a hedge around his house? <laughs> Which represents his children were covered. Y'all stay with me because this is going to bless you in a minute. His children were hedged in. His servants, they were hedged in. Even his wife with her crazy self was hedged in. <laughs> By the Lord, or oh, talk back to me somebody. The devil could not have messed with any one of them because they had the hedge of the Lord over their lives. Not only was Job the person covered and his house covered, but his possessions were covered. You know, sometimes we have you covered and your children covered, but the devil just goes into your properties and begins to do all kind of stuff. Uh, but God had his possessions covered. The Bible said, check the scripture out. It says all that he had. Not some of what he had. I said, but all that he had on every sign, everything that he had touched, all of his businesses, all of his investments. You know, we have some investments and it goes up today and it goes down tomorrow. Uh, that was not the case with Job. Everything that he had, all of his livestock, they were fully protected and hedged in by the power of God. This is to show you that when God protects you, he does not protect some of you, but he protects all all of you or oh, talk back to me somebody he doesn't just protect you and leave everything else exposed devil is a liar when God does a job he does a good job he's faithful to complete all that he has started within you do I have any witnesses in the house every area of your life is hedged in when God protects you now I want you to notice something here and that is Job was aware of the fact that he was blessed. He was aware of the fact that God had increased him on every side. He was aware of the fact that things were going good for him. But what he was not aware of was the fact that he had a hedge over his life. <laughs> and then the reason why he was not aware of that is because a hedge is something that you cannot see in the natural. It is a spiritual thing. It is a supernatural thing. It is a hidden thing. Folks may look at you and they may see you, the person. They may see your wealth, your fame, your prestige, and all that God has blessed you with. Ah, but little do they know that if they try to touch you, I said little do they know if they try to walk up to you, little do they know that if they try to launch an attack on you, uh, that they will encounter a hedge. Uh, I'm not talking about no physical hedge. Uh, I'm not talking about no physical walls. Uh, I'm talking about the hedge of the Lord. Uh, I'm talking about the covering of the Lord. Uh, or talk back to me, somebody. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I have a bulwark in the spirit uh, over my life. Uh, I have a high wall in the spirit uh, over my life. I have a fortress uh, in the spirit uh, over my life. Uh, if you believe it's over your life as well, uh, I want you to put your hands together uh, and let the devil know that you're fully covered. Uh, oh, come on, let me hear you say I'm covered. Oh, come on and give God praise in the house. David said, but thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. You are the glory and the lifter. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Do I have any words, saints? 
Talk back to me, somebody. Huh? God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Thou preparest table before me in the presence. Let them take notice. Take notice, baby. Take notice, baby. Huh? Thou anointest my head with oil. Cop run it over. Surely. I wish I had somebody to help me preach up in here. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. High five your neighbors and neighbor. I've got a hedge over me. Oh, come on and give God a praise for the hedge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you better put it in the atmosphere that you got a hedge. Hallelujah. The next thing that we want to look at quickly, and then we're going to wrap it up. We want to look at how the hedge of the Lord comes upon your life. Because not because you're saved, that means God just going to throw a hedge on you. And I'm just going to talk about this point quickly and we're going to pray. One of the ways the hedge of the Lord comes upon you is through your prayers. Prayers are put in place because they are prayed in place. Prayers just don't happen like that. Somebody got to pray it. Somebody got to declare it. It is the word of the Lord. In other words, when believers begin to pray and to fellowship and to worship God, and to stay in his presence and to walk uprightly, it constantly builds a hedge around them. The hedge keeps getting stronger and thicker and wider. Or oh, talk back to me, somebody. And it keeps getting higher and higher. And oh, Lord, have mercy. The Bible said that Job was a man of prayer. Job was always making intercession and supplications not just for himself but especially for his family the bible said in verse 5 if you could look quickly in your bible it says here and it was so that when the days of their feasting were gone about that job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Apparently, Job kids used to party heavily. Especially around their birthdays. When it was their birthdays, they would invite all the brothers and call the sisters to this one's house. And they would get down, drinking. You don't know how they feast in Bible days. You understand? And they would get down and party and drink and dance and all this kind of shindig. They'll be doing, I mean, a whole lot of stuff going on there. And then they'll go to the next one's house. And they have the party. And they would go through that year after year. And every time they had a feast, Job sends in his heart. That's how perfect this man was. He wanted his house to stay covered. <laughs> Y'all know you're, you might be safe, but you got one or two of them in your house that ain't too safe, and they do some stuff to get God upset. And y'all know when God get upset, he had to send lightning and thunder and rain and hail and stuff. Oh, talk back to me, somebody. And Hurricane Janet and Hurricane Joyce and Hurricane this and Hurricane... <laughs> y'all know how God works. When the anger of the Lord is kindled towards you. Huh? So Job would constantly, now whenever they would have these feasting times, he would constantly come and get all of them and begin to sanctify them. I'm sure he would get some oil and just lay hands on them. In the name of Jesus, he come on my son the bubble. <laughs> yeah, and have them repent before God. And not only that, but he would offer burnt offerings before the Lord and there we have. I remember while I'm preaching, I remember this young man was telling me that he was he, when he was living in his mother's house, he would be sleeping all through two, three a.m. in the morning. He would hear, he would hear boom, and it would just, the noise would be so loud. The mother would just come through the door and take the bottle on and say, In the name of Jesus, I bind every he said she did that all the time. He used to be so upset. But now he understood why she would do that. Because he used to do stuff that he ain't got no business doing. 
So she had to keep him sanctified. And some of you that have some unsaved husbands, and you are saved, you need to keep them sanctified too. So Job would do this, the Bible said, he would do it continuously. Just in case they may have sinned against God and experienced the judgment of God. And as a result of that, God kept the hedge over Job's seed or offspring and he did it. Watch this. Not because of, his, not because of the children's sake, but he did it for Job's sake. And that's why it is good when you're going through something and you know that you are doing right to get someone who is righteous to lay hands on you and to pray for you. Because what God wouldn't do for your sake, he will do it for the righteous sake. For the effectual fervent prayers of a right. Oh Lord, I wish I had a little church up in here to help me pray to him. Oh, I feel my help coming on now. Ah, uh, what he wouldn't do for so and so, he would do for someone who is righteous and godly in his sight. The next point I want to give you quickly is Hosea chapter 2, and we're going to wrap it up here. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And let's, let me just give you the, back, the, the backdrop of this particular text. Uh, the Bible talks about the prophet Hosea. And many of you know the story. Hosea was a preacher, he was a prophet. But he was a single man at one time. Until God told him he wanted to marry, to, he wanted him to marry a prostitute named Goma. Y'all know that? Those of you that come to Sunday school, Goma, the prostitute. After they got married, watch this. After the prophet of God got married to Goma, they had three kids, but they still had a major issue in their marriage. Goma would leave the house and go not to the street corners, but she would go find her lovers, all her past flings. Huh? And she kept going back to her lovers. And let me just inject this into the, mes the message. One thing we have to understand about lust lust is never satisfied. I'm going to say it again lust is never satisfied. If you have a whole mongering spirit on you right now, and you have been sleeping around with everybody before you get married, if God don't deliver you before you get married, when you get married, you're going to go back and do the same thing again. Because after you've been with your wife to a husband two or three times, uh, you'll find that something is not being satisfied, and you will go out there to be all oh, talk back to me, somebody. Y'all don't want me to tell the truth in here. I should have said that after the offering. You see? <laughs> Some folks try to marry over stuff. What you need is deliverance. Look at the person next to you and say, neighbor, you need deliverance. I ain't talking about you, but you know. <laughs> so Hosea's wife, Goma, she would constantly go back to her lovers. And almost every day or every week, she's constantly going there. And every time Hosea went to get her now, he wouldn't find her on the street corners, but he would find her in the bed with her lovers. Well, that's getting juicy. The days of our lives. So proper. <laughs> Young and the rest. Let's see. Huh? He would find her in the bed of her lovers. But it gets more juicier because he had was a pain. Her lovers to get her back. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. And those of you that understand the significance of this story, you would know that it represents a sim it's symbolic of God's love for Israel. You know that Israel has been unfaithful to God, but God constantly keeps on reaching out for them and doing whatever he can to bring them back. So that's really what the, the purpose of this uh, story is all about. However, Hosea could have divorced his wife for her infidelity. He could have gotten rid of her a long time ago. But what he decided to do was to pray a hedge around her. I'm almost finished. <laughs> In the book of Hosea chapter 2 verses 6 and 7, it says here, Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns, and I will make a wall that she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after, she shall follow after her lovers, watch this, but she shall not, what, 
overtake them and she shall seek them but shall not find them then shall she say I will go and return to my first husband for then was it better with me than now Understand this as I close, that Hosea learned the power of praying a hedge around his wife. And as a result of that, she lost contact with every one of her lovers. Every time she left the house to go find her lover, she couldn't find them. Every time she left the house to go look for so-and-so, she just lost her way. Nothing was happening. She was just being blocked all around. Or talk back to me, somebody. And eventually, she ended up coming back to her husband and stayed there with him. And I'm here to let you know as I bring the message on that I don't care who it is in your life uh, that is giving you problems uh, some of you got some children you got some grandchildren uh, you got some spouses uh, or you got some interpersonal relationships uh, with some folks that you know that they're not doing right uh, uh, but I hear the Lord saying uh, all you have to do uh, is to begin to pray a hedge around them uh, uh, begin to pray thorns uh, bushes around them uh, begin to pray a high wall around them so every time they try to do whatever they wanted to do they can't do it because there's a hedge around them the hedge of the Lord will abort every plan of the enemy the hedge of the Lord will keep them back in track the hedge of the Lord will bring them back to their homes the hedge of the Lord will take them out of the crack houses the hedge of the Lord will take them out of the bed of their lovers the heads of the Lord will bring them back to the house of God. The heads of the Lord will cause them to come running back to Jesus. I hear the Lord say, keep on praying the hedge. Keep on covering your children with the hedge. Keep on covering your home with the hedge. Keep on covering their future with the hedge. Pray against any ungodly or devil that may try to walk up in their lives and seduce them. Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, every sheet devil, every demonic diabolical warlock wizard or witch that tried to walk in there to seduce them and to take them out you got the authority to pray against it you got the authority to block it before it happens you got the authority to let the devil know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, every tongue rises up against you, you shall condemn or talk back to me somebody you need to hedge up their minds hedge up their bodies hedge up their spirit oh come on here you got the anointing and the authority to do so and when you do it God is going to block them when you do it God's going to stop the enemy from coming through when you do it they're going to stay in the will of God I said when you do it they're going to stay in the will of God come on and put your hands together and give God praise from the heads of the Lord. Somebody ought to get excited about the heads of the Lord. I hear the Lord say that there's another level of heads that has been released over this house, that has been released over your life. You ought to receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me hear you give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. They said Ebola is going around. But we got a hedge. Don't play with the hedge. Don't play with the hedge. I don't care what pestilence is in the land. You got a hedge. You got to keep the hedge up. Keep the hedge going on. Talk back to me somebody. Let me